The two types of breaks I want to go over are page and section breaks. Now a page break, as you recall, is just that. It's a break between pages, as you can see right there. And a section break is a way to section off or isolate a part of your document for layout control purposes. So for example, if I want to convert the bullet to list here at the bottom of page two into two columns, well, if I go ahead and do it now, it's going to apply that to the entire document. So all the text above and below it will be in two columns. But if I just want to apply it to this section, huh, huh, section, then go ahead and put a section break above it and a section break below it. So when I apply the two column format to the single column here, it can't go above the break or below it. Pretty fancy, not only for columns, but well, let's come up here and click on the layout tab, but also for margins, orientation, size, and others. But we'll keep it simple and stick to these items here. And so as a quick review, when you come up here and click on breaks, you've got your page breaks and section breaks. And for the page break, well, wherever the cursor's at, it's going to mark the point at which one page ends, or that page that the cursor's flashing on, and the next page begins. So if I click off and I put my cursor here, and I'm like, okay, I want everything from that point on down to be onto the next page, I could hit enter, 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 but as you recall in earlier training videos, when you add a bunch of extra coding that you could have bypassed by using a shortcut, in this case, inserting a page break, when it comes to more advanced features, it gets hard to work with the document, let alone use the advanced features. In any case, let's go ahead and hit undo, and you can create a break, click on break, and we'll do page, and it takes everything from that point down where the cursor's at, pushes over to the next page, the top of it. Hit undo, and the shortcut keys for page break are control enter, same thing, hit undo, and then now four breaks. Now in the section breaks, we've got four types. I'll just cover the first two because oddly enough, the last two, the even page and odd page, we covered in the header and footer training video, albeit somewhat indirectly. But when you watch that training video, you'll have an idea of what I'm talking about and then just marry the idea of what you see in there for the different odd and even pages or headers and footers with what we're going to cover in here and it should be crystal clear. But even if not, I want to keep it simple here and not get too far ahead. So with our section breaks, you can see the two different types. You've got the continuous, which is what I was talking about. If there's a part of a page within your document that you want from that point, on down to be one type of format or layout change like you know insert a column here so from that point down it's going to be two columns and it won't go from that point where the orange triangle is at I don't know if you can see it up above the blue lines is a separate section so when you insert a section break you'll have two sections because you have the section above it and then you have a section below it and it doesn't matter how many pages you have within your document. So if we have a total of 100 pages, and let's say that I inserted a continuous break at towards the top, like you see here, page 25. Well, from about that point, the orange on page 25 all the way down to page 100 is one section. So if I break it there and I click anywhere within that section, meaning like, well, within the orange part, as it's showing you here, on page 25 or page 26, 27, it doesn't matter because from just a little above the midpoint on page 25 down to page 100 is one section. So it doesn't matter what page, it looks at it as one section. So I can click on page 30 and then come up here and say you're going to be two columns. When I do that, it quickly goes throughout the document and it says everything's going to be in two columns except when I get to the towards the top of page 25 and I notice the break, I can't go beyond the break, so everything from the top of page 25 up to page 1 is going to be left alone. And so having said that, up here, the next page section break, what it does is it not only inserts a new page, just like the page break feature here, but when it inserts a new page, at the top of that new page, it puts in a continuous break, you know, one of these guys here, a section break there, which, you know, you could go ahead and just click next page, go to the top of the next page, and then insert a continuous break up at the top. But why go through all that when you get the best of both worlds, a new page, and at the top of that, sectioned off with the next page break. 
So let's go ahead and put this to the test. Let me go ahead and click off over here and say OK. I've got my bullets here and I'd like all my bullets to be in two columns. I don't want the text below it, the paragraph, to be in two columns or the text above it. So when I click anywhere within the document, because I don't have any section breaks right now, and by the way, how do you know if there are any section breaks within your document? Well, wait for it and I'll show you. Let's go ahead and see what happens when I don't have any part of my document sectioned off with the section break. So if I come up here on the Layout tab and I click on Columns and I want two, notice the default is one. That's for all new documents. But when I choose two, ooh -wee, look at all that. It took the entire document and put it into two columns, page one and page two. Well, I don't want that. Undo, undo. And there we go. So we want to say, OK, look, from, let me put the cursor there, from this point up above, I don't want you to be touched when I go ahead and apply the two-column format. So I'll insert a section break and section that part from that point up above off from the rest down below. So I can come up here, click on Breaks, and go down to Continuous, because I'm not creating a new page with the section. Let's just do Continuous, and it's inserted. How do you know? Well, come up here, click on the Home tab, go to the Paragraph group, and turn on the codes. And there it is right there. Fuzzy little dots. Well, that's not much of a code, is it? Well, you can't see all of it, but if I go ahead and click and drag and select the text and delete it, there you go. Now it opens it up and it says, hey, this is a section break and it's continuous. Let me go ahead and hit undo. And also, let me click before the paragraph, type in some text here. You see, wow, it disappeared. So if it's that tight with your section break and you're like, okay, did I insert a section at all? A couple of other ways you can find out if there's a section within your document is, well, come down below on the status bar and you can see I've got section, well, let me get out of the way, section one. So if I go ahead and click down below here, what section am I in now? Section two. So if I click up above here, I'm in section one. Well, where is that section break? Like I said, with the codes on, it's not showing it to me, so you may want to go ahead and do a little bit of deductive reasoning and go, okay, it's probably right here next to the paragraph marker. And if you don't have the section being displayed down below in the status bar, right-click anywhere on the status bar and check section. Let me click off, and I'm going to get rid of these guys right here because I don't want the extra gobbledygook. Another way you can go about doing this is you can hit the F5 key on the keyboard and it opens up the Find and Replace window to the Go To tab. You can go to a section. So if you want to go ahead and type in 2, and you can see I'm in section 1, and hit Enter, it takes me, let me close out, to the top of section 2. Hit F5, and then, well, selected there by default, it remembers where I was at. So I can just come in here, type in 1, hit enter, takes me to the top of section one, which is page one. But if I had more pages before that section break, like 10, it would take me to, well, the first page, the top of those 10 pages, the top of that section. So let's go ahead and scroll down. And now we can go ahead and click below that section break over in here, and you can validate that. I'm in section two, whew. And then come up here, click on layout, go to page setup, click on columns, do two, and we're good. There we go, we've got two columns and it didn't affect anything above it, did it? Sweet. And then we can scroll down and go, everything's just rosy. Oh my, look at that. That's not supposed to be in two columns. It's supposed to be its own column. So how in the fudge do I do that? Well, I gotta section it off now, don't I? So I can go ahead and click in that paragraph and click on breaks and say we want a continuous one. And it inserts it. Kind of jumped around, didn't it? And when I scroll up, there you can see it. So at the end of that paragraph, but before this one, we've got our section break. And so let me ask you right now, quick, without looking at the status bar down below, how many sections do I have? I inserted two section breaks. So on either side of a section break is counted as one. And then when you go to the other side, it's counted as two. And then when you go to the other side of the second section break, it's three. As you can see down below, three sections. I'm in the third section. And so being in the third section, if I'm like, okay, I don't want that to be two columns, then come up here, click on columns, and say one. 
Oh, see that? It didn't go above the break here to convert everything from that point to the next point into a single column. So I roped it off, isolated it, sectioned off this part of my document, bottom of page one, top of page two, so they can be formatted into two columns, not affect the rest of the document on either side of those section breaks. Let's go ahead and scroll back up, and my columns aren't level. There's a couple ways we can go about getting them level. One way is to go ahead and delete the paragraph code. Now they're level, except they're right up snug against the paragraph above it. What we can do is right click in the paragraph above it, go down to paragraph, and on the indents and spacing tab, let's have some spacing after that paragraph, maybe 12 point, click okie dokie, and that looks good. Or hit undo a couple of times. You can actually click at the end of the first column, or what appears to be the first column. And what I mean by that is that these columns are all tied together. So when I hit enter and type in some more text, hit enter, 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 you see how it pushes over into the next column. So it's one continuous flow of thought, as it were. They're all essential oils, and you can go ahead and balance it that way. Or, speaking of changing thoughts, let's go ahead and hit undo a couple of times to go back to here. That, like, let's say I want to be able to break this up and say these two are my top selling essential oils, and I could type in a title that says the top ones, these are the medium ones, then on the next page, lower, and so on. In any case, I don't want to mix my top essential oils if I add a few more in that column to have a continuous flow over into the next one. But when it continues over, the moment it goes over, it takes whatever's there and gets it out of the way because I don't want my top selling mixed with my mediocres. And so if you have two separate thoughts and you want those to be displayed in your columns to keep them separate, let's do a column break. So wherever the cursor's at, that's where the break's going to be inserted. Come up here on the Layout tab, Page Setup, click on Breaks, and it's a page break, or in that section, that is, column. And you can see that in the picture, when you insert a break there, breaks it, and after the break, it will begin the next column, or the definition. It indicates that the text following the column break will begin in the next column. So anything after it pushes it over into its own column, and so let's go ahead and click on it. And there you go, there's the column break, and if you want to get rid of it, just click before it, hit the delete key, and we're back. But I'm going to go ahead and hit undo. And so anything following that will begin in the next column. So, well, anything after that? No, because it's in the next column. So if I go ahead and hit enter and type in some text and add some more up, you see the moment that that needs more room and it pushes over into that next column. Remember the definition. Anything following the column break or the code as you see it here will begin in the next column. So it begins in the next column. There you go. So that way when I type in additional essential oils, my top selling ones, it doesn't have the others below it continuing with the false thought that those oils are selling at the same rate as these ones, my top selling. Cool. Let's go ahead and hit undo and do that a couple of times. And I can go ahead and separate that one by clicking after that, doing a break to column. And then, okay, we got that. Let's come down below here break to column and there we go pretty cool then I can go ahead and type in my titles this is the bottom 50 percent that's the bottom 25 top 75 and that's our best selling and you know just type in there best shift home you know make it big bold and beautiful and put an underline well okay the codes are getting in the way you can click on the home tab turn off the codes but there you go now you have some additional options when it comes to your columns and let me go ahead and hit undo. I will just get rid of that so we just have it all uniformed. And that's up here on the layout tab. Go to the page setup group, and there you go, columns. Click on it, and there's the two. But if you want more options, click on more columns, and there you go. So you can choose one of the presets or tweak your preset. Well, you can also say, oh, well, I want three. Automatically jumps to three, but let's go back to two. And then down below the width and spacing, there's a preview of it, so you can watch that as we tweak this over here. So we have a total of two columns, right? The reason why it doesn't allow us to change the second column is because this guy's checked. It wants to keep the columns the same width. 
but if I don't want them the same width I can uncheck that and then I get the option to tweak that one and you know make it a little bit less as you can see in the preview here and then the spacing becomes great between the first and the second columns so I can go ahead and decrease that in which case that encroaches more well you can go ahead and play with that then click okie dokie and there you go and if that doesn't work for you well of course you can go ahead and either undo that or click on columns and go back to more columns and make some additional changes let's go back to equal column width and well, I think it was three inches let's go to three and half inch spacing in between the two columns and there you go you can apply it to this section and what section are we in well the section breaks here so above that is section one. First section break that's section two and then well down below on page two second section break page three so you can see down below we're in section two so, or you can just go ahead and say from this point forward or the whole document well we'll just keep it simple and then in this section only and you can even put a line in between check that and a line will be between the columns click okie dokie see if you like that and well it goes all the way to the top of the column and so if you want to go ahead and rearrange your layout here so that is also at the top so it's even with the line in between it's your flavor go for it and then finally if you want to be able to mess with your columns here and not have to use the columns menu you do get your options up here on the horizontal ruler like your indents for your first line your hanging indent your left indent you know just click and drag and do your thing as we talked about in earlier training videos let me hit undo of course you also have your spacing in between the columns you can click and drag and make it greater I'm gonna go ahead and hit undo and in fact let me get rid of that line columns more columns you can turn off the video now because you probably know how to uncheck it but since you're watching let's just go ahead and click okie dokie and ah, I feel better thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for all my training, please visit me at my website, dreamforce.us.